On this machine, the web server can find files in this folder, which is C inetpub www root. With Apache, the idea is the same, but it's going to be a different folder. It's going to it's going to be a different name of the folder. So I will put all my pages in this folder. All right. These two PHP pages are the ones I created. Some of these other things get created when it's installed. So, let's make a real simple page that will show the time. All right? The time is obviously something dynamic, right? Because, you know, if we put the time on a page, if we were to hard code that time in HTML, well, the time would never change that. But, if we do it in PHP, every time it's requested, you'll be given the current time. So let's go make a web page. I'll go into my Notepad++, and I'll make a web page. And I'll put in my dot type. HTML. <coughs> HTML. Head. Title. Simple dynamic page. All right, add it on my body tag and body. And HTML. And now I can put any other stuff that I want to in. Put an H1 that says welcome. Then I'll put in a paragraph. The current time is and Obviously, if I were to do this in HTML, it wouldn't be dynamic. It would be, you know, I'd look at the clock as 5.53, and that's what it would say always, you know, regardless of what time of day it is. It would be right twice a day, right, but, or actually once a day if I include a.m. and p.m., all right, but it really wouldn't be terribly useful. So let's go and let's look up the PHP instruction to do time. show that literally, right? Because it still thinks that that's HTML, right? So it's going to put out on the screen, if I were to save this as a PHP file, all right? So if I go in here and type in localhost slash simple PHP, it shows exactly that, right? Because, hey, browser sees that, thinks it's HTML. 
and just outputs it. Well, that's clearly not what we want. We need an indication to tell the web server that, hey, this isn't meant to be HTML. This is meant to be PHP code. So treat it different. What's the difference between PHP code and plain old HTML? PHP code gets processed. Something happens to it. The server does something with it. The web server simply, for this static HTML, the web server simply just sends it to the client. It doesn't have to do any processing. It's already made into HTML. But this is not HTML. This is a PHP instruction. And as such, it needs to be processed in, and created HTML. So how do we designate that this, how do we designate to the web server that this instruction is not HTML, but it's PHP? We put in this thing. Oops. Yeah, you do. I'm done. Uh, you close it at the end. I thought it was just no. bracket, question mark, PHP, and yeah. then close it at the end with the yeah. question mark. Yeah, my mistake. All right. So, what does this mean? This tells the web server that everything between here and here is not HTML. Therefore, it's not going to get sent to the browser as is. It's going to get processed. So the web server is going to do some processing for this. And in this case, echo simply means display or send to the browser. This is a command that spits out the data in a certain format. And I wouldn't expect you to learn this. I don't know that. I copied and pasted that. I mean, who knows what that syntax means. I mean, we could probably look it up and figure it out, but uh, life's too short for that. All right. So I'll go and save this. And now when I request the page, notice it says the current time is Wednesday, 11th of September, 2013, 5.58 and 21 seconds. I hit refresh, 31 seconds. 33. So it's changing every time I hit refresh, except for the couple times that I clicked within the same second and got the exact same time. All right. Uh, but in other words, this page got generated dynamically. Now, parts of this page are static, right? Static, unchanging, just plain old HTML. And parts of the page are dynamic. All right. Now, um, the dynamic parts of the page are in PHP, in this case. PHP is not the only server-side scripting language. There's other server-side scripting languages. But in principle, they all work the same. They're all a mix of some server-side code and some HTML. And that server-side code gets processed and turned into HTML. N now, if I look at the view source on the browser side, I'm going to see... HTML, which should be what I expect, right? Because browsers understand HTML. Browsers don't understand PHP. That PHP has to get processed by the server, HTML created, and the final HTML is what gets sent to the client. Because that's what browsers understand, is browsers understand HTML. All right? So... It might be a little confusing in this case because this machine is both the client and the server. But we have to look at it from, we can look at it from different perspectives. If I do a view source from within the browser, I'm seeing the code that the server generated. Whereas if I open up and edit the file in Notepad, all right, or Notepad++, there I'm seeing the server-side code that gets executed. Questions about this? Okay. So, yeah, go ahead. Um, so it seems like there are two parts to the PHP. There's the part that you put in your page, and then the fact that your web server also has to understand it. Yes. And they talk to each other. 
Yes. The okay. web server. In fact, PHP stands for PHP Hypertext Preprocessor. In other words, before it creates HTML, your server has to sort of preprocess it. And servers don't inherently understand everything. You have to install that language. You'd have to server. install that, yes. Okay. Yes. Um, there, there, so there would be two pieces that you'd have to install. There would be the um, web server software itself, which is either IIS or Apache. If you don't have a web server installed, my suggestion would be to install Apache because there's a nice little package that installs everything. Apache is the world's most used web server um, software. But then you'd have to also install PHP so that the web server understands it. On itself, by itself rather, a web server will understand delivering HTML pages. When you add on the PHP, it will understand processing the PHP code and creating an HTML page. Now, what does this have to do with mobile coding again? All right, let's go and add here is your user agent. Now right now I don't expect you to necessarily understand the syntax of the PHP code that I'm typing in. I do expect you to follow the fact that that represents that this is PHP code. And likewise, when I do the same thing here. All right. I hope this is right. It'll tell me if it isn't. tell me, it just didn't do anything. Ah. Maybe when this becomes a bigger budget enterprise, I'll have someone edit the video to take out mistakes like that. All right. Until then, you know, you'll see someone, you'll see Hoffman come out running with a clipboard and it's like, Zeller's PHP, take two, you know. Oh, if only he was walking by at the time, that would have been, that would have been awesome. Anyhow, that's the syntax, uh, my mistake. So now if I look at it, it will show, current time is Wednesday, is 11th of September, blah, 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 blah. Here is your user agent. And effectively, it's telling me it's on Chrome. Okay? Now, so two more things I want to do. Is I want to do... I want to do something with this user agent. Alright? I want to identify if I'm, on, if I'm on a mobile device or not. Alright? So let's do that. And then the last thing I want to do is talk about installing it if you have a machine and then you, you need a web server installed. If you have a Mac, chances are Apache's already installed and chances are PHP is installed, you may just have to enable it. All right? So the instructions I give will be uh, Windows. By default, I think Apache comes running on Macs and I think... You, have to, yeah, you just have to enable it. You just have to enable it, right. It used to be automatically enabled, but then like with one release... I, rem I actually remember that. When they put in an upgrade to the operating system, it turned everyone's PHP off and everyone was running around screaming. And, and, yeah. and it's like and they, they include a, uh, a document right. that you can download, you know, that's right. to step one through. Okay. Through and awesome. So let's do something with the PHP, with, with, with the user agent. Let's test the user agent. Let's scrutinize that user agent and figure out if it is a computer or a mobile device. That's a big task, right? Because, you know, 
This is one user agent. How do I know that this is a computer? Well, because it says it's running Chrome, and certain parameters in here tell me it's, it's a computer and not that. But to write a program to do that, that's, that's, a, that's a big task. Fortunately, someone's done that for us. And there is a website called Detect Mobile Browsers dot com. And what we can do is, and we'll give credit to this in my code, we can actually download a little snippet of PHP code that I can then open and I can tweak it. I'm going to copy this code and I'm going to put it in here. I actually put a second paragraph here. Now, if we look at this code, it's gigantic. All right? Here, let me scroll through it so that you can get it. All right? There. Effectively, what it's doing is it's parsing. It's looking at that user agent for certain words. And based on that, it's identifying um, if it's a mobile browser or not. For example, if the word Android is contained, duh, it's a mobile browser somewhere in the user agent. If Avant Go, if BADA, if Blackberry, if Blazor, if Elaine, I don't know who Elaine is, but if Elaine, I guess Elaine has a mobile phone, I don't know. <coughs> IE Mobile, if you're running a Windows phone and you're running Internet Explorer Mobile. iPhone or iPod. Essentially, it's looking for all those strings. <coughs> what we can do is we can replace this, because this is for redirection. We're not ready to redirect yet. But we can replace that with this. Device equals mobile. We'll review the syntax of this in more detail next time. But for now, we'll show it to you. You can look at it. And the important thing, and you know, you can, you can actually use this code if you want. does is this looks to see if that user agent matches any of these things. If it does, then it knows that the device is mobile. If not, it knows the device is not mobile. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to echo or display the value of that device variable. So if it's mobile, it's going to echo the word mobile. If it's not mobile, it's going to echo not mobile. <coughs> So, let's go and run this here. And it knows that that's not mobile. If I go to the emulator, and I pretend I'm a Kindle, oh, it doesn't think I'm mobile. I wonder if that is a flaw in the emulator or a flaw. Let's go into HTC Hero. 
Is it a tablet? Is it a tablet, not, not a mobile device? Oh, uh, that could be. Is that a phone is what they're calling mobile? That could be. Yeah. All right, here we go. This guy thinks it's mobile when I did the HTC. Again, remember that a couple things could be going wrong here. The, the Kindle might not be identifying itself in a manner, or that script might not consider a tablet to be a mobile device, or it could be a bug in that script. Who knows? All right? But this detection does tell us whether it's mobile or not. So again, this syntax I recognize is tricky. All right? An if statement, again, allows you to choose between two alternatives. This happens if this condition is true. In other words, if it's a mobile device. Otherwise, this condition happens. And so we've now written code to determine whether the page is uh, being viewed on a mobile browser or not. Okay. Guess what? We can then use that code elsewhere to do certain things. For example, maybe I only want to display an image if I am not on a mobile device, right? That would seem to be a reasonable thing. Or maybe I'll display a different image if I'm on a mobile device versus that. We could also, by the way, have a different script to identify if it's an Apple versus Windows and maybe display a different link for download for software if they're on an Apple machine versus Windows. All right? Um, but if I'm going to carry this through and display an image, let me pop out here. They don't give you any sample pictures in Windows 8. The fiends. I guess I'll have to go to paint then. <clears throat> and I'll draw a big old smiley face. <laughs> I have someone who wants fire. Save it as a PNG, <laughs> and I'm going to put it in my web servers folder. So C, INET pub, WW root. I'll save it as computer. crazy stuff now. For example, we could say if device equals mobile I'm going to display an image tag that has an SRC of mobile.png.
this computer, or not mobile, rather, we can display the computer image. Oops. Got the end of quotes here. mobile, it's on a computer. If we view the same thing in the mobile emulator, it's on a mobile device. So obviously this is just something silly, but you could see how, you know, depending on the context and depending on the problem, we could do all sorts of things. For example, if we are running a news site and we're on a desktop machine, we could show two columns of the most important content, right? Because we have more real estate to show two columns side by side. If we are on a mobile device, we could maybe only show one column worth of the most important, the five most important news stories instead of the ten most important news stories. Now, how is this different than doing some of our client-side responsive techniques? Because we could write our client-side code to hide those five news stories, right? We could, on a mobile device, we could, we could hide those five news stories and make it not display. How would this be different? You're not, downloading it in the first You're place. not sending it to the client in the first place. That means instead of sending down a bunch of stuff, some of which you're going to hide, you're only sending down what they're going to see, right? And that actually is sort of a big game. Remember we talked about, um, in one of the examples, we hit an image on the mobile version of the page. But we said that image still gets downloaded, even though it doesn't get displayed. All right? Well, here, we could, if it's on a mobile device, just not show an image at all. So it's not like we're going to download it and hide it. We're not sending it down at all. And so we could, we could do a much better job managing the bandwidth. Questions at this point. All right, here's what I want to try to do. So I want to try to install on my laptop here a web server and PHP. Grab the adapter here. Apple doesn't use a VGA connector? Nope. Too easy. <laughs> 